Hey yo, how's it going everyone? Entropy here today with another video. Today is another day and this time instead of leaning towards the dark side, let's go give the extreme deck a little shot and, and, and work with some justice energy. So how is this built differently? I think that is one of the most important parts is that yes, they're both part of the beast AD archetype, but they can actually work very, very differently. I know some people like the hybrid build where you just play all the all the beast AD options. You play four break ride, four extreme, four reverse. And I think that's a really different story. I think that tells a very different story. And for me, extreme should be a dedicated build by itself. Um, but even when it has all the support and all the focus it needs and all the spotlight it has, honestly, it's more of a fun deck than not. But it is really fun and restanding stuff is, 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 is definitely nice. All right, so here, let's get started with Ethics Buster. Ethics Buster, when Rotopon, upon your banger gets plus 10, and the following ability, when this unit attacks, stand all your front row rear guards, and when boosted gets plus 3, so it means that you can at least make 5 attacks, uh, 5 possible attacks on your brick right turn, uh, plus more if you if you do more restanding shenanigans, or if you have um, a restanding banger like reverse. So this isn't a reverse based deck, so there is less synergy with Ethics Buster, but it's still nice to know that you get that extra 10k power on the banger. And it's nice to know that you're guaranteed to resend your front row. This is the star of the show, SP Ethics Buster Extreme. Limit right for when you drive check a, a grade two or less B steady, stand one of your rear guards. And if you don't, this is hyper. If you don't, do not stand anything. A uh, one of your rear guards just plus five. So, the caveat is in this game, you cannot choose to not restand. If you can restand, you have to restand. And if you can't restand, like if everything is stood already, then you can choose to allocate 5k. So what that means is when you're playing, be careful with your boosting. Because if you're using unnecessary boosts, well, you're restanding that. But you never needed to use it in the first place. So you're basically losing out on another stage of power, right? You're losing out on 5k. So be careful with that. I've definitely made that misplay myself. And you shouldn't have to. Uh, in addition, when boosted gets plus 3 until NFL, and it is a cross run. We're going to play one of reverse cameras to lock one rearguard, uh, discard two beast deities to get the following ability at the end of battle. You can stand this and draw two cards. In addition, when you drive check reveals a grade 3 or greater, it gets plus 5, and it is a cross run. So I'm not going to explain much about this card and the synergies because you can go watch the reverse build video. One thing I'd like to add on to the last video was the reason why I didn't really want to play a mixed grade 3 lineup, non BCD grade 3 lineup, is because, well, Extreme really wants those that plus 5. You know, you might as well have that extra power to hit over numbers, especially if you do miss that break right turn. That extra 5k does help you as a restanding Vanguard. So that is important to recognize um, why I don't play cards like Splendor, for example. I still think that it has great potential and I'll explain why I think it's a possible alternative in this build, but not in a reverse centric build. Lastly, we're playing for Yamateno Drake on restand plus four. So, well, your break ride gives, gets it, lets it restand, hit 14k numbers. Extreme can restand it and hit 14k numbers. So it's really nice like that. For the way twos, we're playing for Golden Anglet for Hatred Chaos. These cards hit 9K, uh, 12k or 13k on uh, on their second hit hits numbers it's nice and dandy damned leo because we want that beast KD consistency and brainy papio lets you do some shenanigans early on and actually does better in this build because we play other um restand centric cards like max speed max speed says when it stands you can camera last one to stand one other regard if your vanguard is a beast steady it's important to note that it doesn't need to stand up non it doesn't need to stand up beast deity so you can actually splash out non beast deities in this build and still make it work uh, to a certain extent we have a desert gate at 10k it's more important because well it can swing by itself in the front row now um, and restanding and a, an additional restand target when you're low on resources which is a weakness in this build is, is very important um, you will recognize that because extreme re requires drive checking great tour less beast deities I'm putting an emphasis on playing a pure beast AD grid to a lower lineup. I don't want to whiff its skill. I want every single drive check to count. I want every single drive check to count, whether it's going to be a restand or extra power. If you have everything stood up, that means that every single drive check is plus 5k minimum. And that is really, really important. 
We're going to play one Hilarity Destroyer on attack or boost. You basically discard one, draw one. It's a nice filter, but it's not as important in the in the extreme build as the reverse build because you don't really need to filter for your combo pieces. It's okay. Um, it's it, like the pieces generally work by themselves more often than the reverse build where you really need well ethics and then you really need reverse and then you really need your golden anglets or your Yamatano drakes or your 12 case to actually hit numbers. Lastly, we we'll play four PGs primarily because it's a beast 80. Of course, it has synergy with the break ride, but you know, the deck doesn't really have that much synergy with the Brick Ride. So it's it's primarily because of the name. And lastly, we're going to be playing Riot Horn instead. Riot Horn is a great forerunner, actually. When you're basically in the same column as this unit, stand, stand this unit. Um, this card is great because when you stand one thing with Extreme, you can stand Riot Horn for free, which means you don't clog up that boosting requirement. Um, and you can still get that plus five because you, you have less units to stand up. Overall, again, this card is okay as a first ride. I definitely do think that. But it's important to recognize that in the TCG, it was even worse. It was even worse because, well, it didn't get that plus five option when you drive check a uh, great tour or less B steady. It just says when you drive check, uh, well, when you drive check, um, uh, it doesn't give the, give you that option to give plus five, right? So because we have Ethics Buster, because we have the buff, one possible play, one winning image, and this is really important, is... You have your Ethics Buster, you break right into Extreme, your Ethics Buster does the standing for you. Your Extreme gives the power for your rear guard. So, in other words, instead of a dictator-like play like Reverse, where you're restanding, you have all the power, you're hogging all the power, you're forcing your rear guards to fend for themselves and actually pick up the pace, Extreme empowers your rear guards. Extreme works with Ethics Buster himself, gives your rear guards that restand. Gives that 5k guarantee plus 10k because we're playing a pure grade tour or less at the Expuster uh, B Stady lineup and because we're playing, well, triggers, right? So I like to think of it that way. I like to think of it as more about having that big five attacks rather than scaling eight attacks if possible. It's also less piece to rely on, which is definitely great and definitely worth a shot. So with that said, let's get straight into a game. And make and let's show how this build can work in practice so you will know that I've been playing um, a lot of ethics buster I've been trying playing the hybrid build I know that's quite popular where you're playing um, where you're playing you know the base uh, the, the, the base break ride you're playing four of the extreme you're playing four of the reverse but I do think that the Yamatano Drake is great um, here we're actually okay with the extreme. Um, I'm just gonna leave it. Extreme is an okay uh, first ride target. Like for this build, of course your priority is gonna be uh, the break ride, Ethics Buster, and then your extreme, and then your reverse, and then your Yamatano Drake when you're desperate and you just really want that twin draft. So here, it's, it's not the best matchup uh, against Narukami because they do have the retire options. Um, but the good thing is that because the second is less piece reliant, you definitely do have um, a slightly better edge than the reverse build, in my opinion. Uh, Extreme also lets you pump up your numbers, which means that you don't really need to commit that many boosters. So what you can do is if you have a few rewards, so for example, if you only have a golden anglet and an extreme on your Vanguard circle, well, you swing with the golden anglet, you swing with the extreme, um, you stand that golden anglet, it's, it hits 13, you give plus five, plus five to the rear guard, so it still hits 22 by itself and can do decently. Max beat. All right, we're just gonna swing. Remember that the Linchu got nerfed so we can no longer snipe your starters, which is really, really nice. Um, Riot Horn is a really great addition um, and honestly has great synergy with, uh, with, with, with Extreme. I definitely do think that because it's less card card advantage reliant like um, than, than it's partner or, or flip side reverse. Rackhorn can actually have a bigger role. But yeah, let's see how our opponent plays. I think it's just going to be your standard, basically, um, preset 10 eradicator build. Um, nothing too spicy. Maybe play that one Steve, um, but we see that 10k vanilla. So Desert Gunners are nice too. Ethics Buster Extreme, we're going to sack into a draw. 
So we're one to one for triggers so far. That's not bad. We got the uh, the breaker eye. That's nice. Are we gonna go for the Brady Papio plays? I don't think. I don't think so. Brady Papio. Max speed. We're gonna we're gonna save our resources for later. Let, let's save it. It's not. We have to sack a trigger in order to make that multi attack play work. And it also assumes that our opponent doesn't hit a trigger, which they did. Um, so in that case, well, think about it this way. If I did put like uh, Hatred Chaos, 9 plus 3 to the corner, 12 hits, opponent hits a trigger, well, that means my 16 can't hit anyways. If they don't hit a trigger, they're at 15 or 16 hits, but we need to hit a trigger in order to hit 22 and they need to hit not hit a trigger. So there's too many, <laughs> there's too many trigger sacking going on. We need to hit trigger and they need to not hit trigger twice. Um, to actually warn that play. Vowing, uh, Vowing Sword hits a heal. That's really nice for our opponent. Not really nice for us. But we hit a heal. Wow, we're doing really good that way. Both hit draws, both hit heals. We're just going to go for Ethics Buster. We're okay with taking some damage, especially with a PG here. We can call it a we can uh, call it a reverse or, or grade three. In this case, sometimes I like to keep that reverse in my hand, but because this is an extreme deck profile, <laughs> let's just make sure that I uh, stick to the script and uh, make sure that it is how it works. Um, recognize that because we already know that we've shown two heals. The odds of hitting a heal again is quite low now. So that's why I'm okay with swinging Rearguard first. Um, even though we might whiff a heal, the odds aren't really in our favor anyways. Uh, and this way we can actually um, push for a 2 damage difference. We see the new Grade 2, Laurent Sports Dragon. Uh, when you ride a Grade 3, you can Camelot's 1 to retire something prioritizing macro. Chip Retire, you can't choose, but it has great synergy with Vowing's Favor in Reverse. Definitely. Oh, and, and Gauntlet Buster, too. Rising Phoenix. So one difference between this build with the Extreme and the Reverse build is Reverse can do more hits, but is more peace-reliant. Extreme is less peace-reliant, um, but is focused around pumping five big hits, five bigger hits. So it really depends on what you prefer. Personally, from my experience, Reverse does help you scale up enough already you have a lot of options that help you scale anyways so i don't really worry about the eight attacks not really hitting numbers um and it really depends on where you're at at the game reverse is better when your opponent's already at four or five because well you don't really need to scale that much in order to push your opponent but extreme is better for pushing when you know your opponent's going to take some damage and um you need to hit over those numbers so unfortunately we draw into another heal but we have two pgs to compensate for that that's nice uh, nice that way we might commit a uh, we might commit a Yamato no Drake and a Hatred Chaos and we're just gonna punch again. We only have one heal trigger left. Odds are pretty low, and I'd rather know that I can at least force them to five because we hit numbers. So let's just prioritize that. Don't want triggers to ruin our day after all. Alright, we were whiffing triggers. I mean, not hitting any triggers. That's good, they didn't hit anything too. That's nice and comfortable. We're at 3 damage, we have only 1 intercept. Of course, our opponent can break right and snipe it. But we have 2 PGs to compensate. So, it is really important to recognize what cards you have in your hand. Um, and how many PGs you want to be comfortable with in this matchup. Because... If you don't have any intercepts, two is, is the comfortable amount just in case your opponent has a descendant turn. And uh, our opponent's just gonna gauntlet and uh, snipe our riot horn right there. CB2 draw one, Nitri. So your opponent's at five. Our break right turn is gonna be quite big. Of course, in this case, if you could choose, am I gonna go for the reverse or am I gonna go for the extreme? If you had both, you would go for the reverse. Um, fortunately, well, 
We got damage denied at 3, so we don't really need to think about that yet. Let's just call some intercepts and protect herself. Sometimes you do want to call one extra grade 3 or something just to make sure that the Gauntlet Buster um, doesn't retire your front row because they prioritize retiring back row, right? Um, but in this case, because our opponent only has three Counter Blasts, it means that they can't actually use the Gauntlet multiple times. They also don't have a Lorenz Force on their board, which means that they can't Counter Blast over one. And unfortunately, we don't really even need to show the extreme. Ethics Buster just goes for face and wins the game. So that's a big shame. Um... I guess, <laughs> well, what can I say? I guess, I guess you can Im imagine if they did give us that four damage, what would have happened with the extreme play? Well, we would have broke right into extreme. We would have attacked, attacked, and then we would have attacked with the Vanguard. We're going to reset our rear guards. We're going to hit two drive checks, whatever it may be. We're going to pump up the rear guard numbers to hit numbers just in case they hit a defensive or just in case they hit a heal trigger, and we'll still get through those. So that's basically the winning image of the deck. Unfortunately, well, we scraped by the Eradicator before we even got to do that. We had our PG ready to go. And I guess that is even, in terms of gameplay, that's even better than having to desperately break right and, and go, for, go for the kill. Um, but that's just how it is sometimes. So hope you enjoyed this build. If you want to see more again, I do tend to do live streams near the middle or the end of the season as I've shown through the basics of the deck profile first. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Honestly, I don't have as much experience with this build as the reverse build, uh, but I hope you value my opinion. I mean, it's an opinion after all. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this build because you don't really need grade three or greater B steady name specifically. Well, you can play around with more non B steady grade three lineups. Um, in the same vein, because the reverse build doesn't really need Beast Daddy grade 2 or less on your drive check, well, maybe you can play more non Beast Daddies um, for your grade 2 or less, which is why you play your energy chargers and your stream bouncers and stuff like that. Um, with that said, it's important to recognize that, you know, reverse does need to discard two Beast Daddies, so, so that's that that's important to, to recognize. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in seeing more extreme gameplay, comment down below, let me know. Um, if you enjoyed it, again, also comment down below. Let me know. I really appreciate it. Wish you all the best. If you liked the video, go like it as well. It would really, really help. And if you haven't followed or subscribed yet, go go click that button uh, so you stay tuned for more content um, in the future. So the next video will probably be big news segment. I will be talking about my thoughts on the global controversy with the SP metal in the big news section. So remember to stay tuned for that i will definitely um i'll definitely see what i can meme out of games to you this time uh and until then i'll see you all soon see you all on the, on the weekends i guess bye